welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and today I'm going to be planting up the dwarf bulbs that I went through in a previous video. So these bulbs are of um, loads of different varieties of tulips and daffodils and scari, iris, crocus and other odds and ends. But they're all the bulbs that grow to 30 centimetres or less. Although I think I do have two varieties of tulip that grow to 40 centimetres. Because these bulbs are dwarf and therefore they don't grow very tall, they look really cute in pots. And what I like to do um, for my spring or late winter is to put these pots out on our garden table. And then as they burst into life, Life, you get this constant flow of colour and joy um, throughout the early season and so what I'm doing today is I'm going to plant up these pots and I'll talk a little bit about you know how I'm planting them and why I'm doing it that way and I'll just show you how I'm going to plant them and this is a really fun project to do on quite a mild autumn day I mean we are coming into winter now so it's November if you're not watching this this year um, this is November and it's been quite mild so far so so I've been waiting for the temperatures to cool down because you don't want to put your tulips in too early in case they get something called, I think it's called tulip fire. So we have to wait for the season to cool down a little bit but actually with the pots these are going to be absolutely fine and I'm going to plant everything in the pots today. So the compost that I'm using today is the Melcourt Silver Grow Peat Free Compost that I always use. So it's not an ad but I really like the compost and I've mixed it with some horticultural grit and horticultural grit is just really fine grit. You could use sand or perlite definitely but what you want to do is create drainage or compost that will drain really well because bulbs do not like to sit in water and if you're in a rainy country like ours <laughs> in here in the UK it does rain a lot in the winter and then you definitely need to make sure your pots can drain. So along with the grit that I'm adding to the compost so that I create compost with really good drainage, um, what I also make sure is that the pots can actually drain themselves. So even though pots come with drainage, generally they come with a hole in the bottom. If they don't, I drill a hole in the bottom just to make sure that the water can escape. Um, but with this pot here, the hole on the bottom is flush with the surface so if I was to place that on a patio slab then it would actually block the water from draining so I always make sure that I don't place them straight on a patio slab and whilst I'm waiting for my bulbs to bloom I put them on a wooden pallet um, up against a sunny wall here in the back garden and if where I was going to put this was slabs and not gravel then I would make sure that the pot is raised up on you know some crocs or some pot feet which um, I have a few of those but I always like to make sure that you know the water can actually escape from the bottom of the pot it's no good just having good drainage in the compost um, you need to make sure that the water can escape if your bulbs don't drain very well and they're sitting in wet soil they will rot they won't flower and you'll be really disappointed so some pots will come with indentations on the bottom like this and um, that's where the hole is indented and so the outside is higher up and therefore the water will be able to escape um, through this hole and it will just seep out of the sides. The other good thing to do if you've got them is to plant your bulbs in porous pots because if you plant them in something like terracotta or some kind of pottery then um, water can escape through the sides it just evaporates more easily than in a plastic pot but if you've only got plastic then that's absolutely fine don't worry about it and in fact plastic pots generally speaking are designed with holes all around the base so that water can escape really easily the other thing I always use when I'm planting bulbs into pots um, along with a good compost which has got lots of nutrients I use a bulb starter and any bulb starter will do um, and I just sprinkle the granules on the surface um, before I put the bulbs in and that way you're giving some extra nutrition to the bulbs and it will just get them going faster and give them extra nutrients. So the other thing I wanted to mention about the compost is that you can definitely use garden compost if you've made your own um, that's absolutely fine the only thing that you might struggle with there is that your compost if it hasn't got hot enough will have weed seeds in it still that will germinate as the weather warms in the spring and so you'll have to go and pull those weeds out and just keep a general eye on them um, so it's easier sometimes just to use the shop-bought compost because it's been sterilized and so for these very small the dwarf bulbs that go in the smaller pots 
because there isn't much depth to them I just fill those pots with this um, store-bought compost. Um, when I plant the bigger bulbs in the deeper pots later on I will put garden compost in the bottom and then top it up with the store-bought compost because that will then you know blanket out any weed seeds that might germinate because they'll just be too deep. So I always find there is a question about whether or not to put crocs in the bottom of your pots and the problem with putting crocs in the bottom of your pots is that you can block the drainage hole. If you've only got one drainage hole like I have here um, and you, you put a croc down, the likelihood is that water is not going to get through the croc um, and so then you are going to create a pool at the bottom and your bulbs won't like that. So what I like to do is put two crocs and I kind of place them quite carefully. So I put one croc there and then I balance one on top so that water can still get down below. And the reason I put crocs in is so that I make sure that the soil doesn't actually block the hole because it can kind of get compacted over time as it rains. So by doing this, you're preventing the soil falling through the hole, but you're also allowing the water to go through. So that's the only reason I put crocs in the bottom um, to help with that problem because you want the hole at the bottom for drainage, but you don't want to block it. So what I'm planting in this pot because it's a very deep pot or one of my deeper pots is I'm planting the tulips because the tulips actually have to go the deepest out of all the bulbs that I'm planting today and this is the Princess Irene Parrot which I'm very excited about and this is how one of the bulbs looks and this is the pointy end so you put pointy end upwards and this is where the root comes out the sort of flatter end that's probably not a good example let me grab another one well, they're all a bit the same shape actually but you know pointy end upwards basically um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill um, my pot with some compost which I've already mixed with the grit not fill it but I'm going to gently place it there so that I don't dislodge any of the crocs that I just put in and what you want with the tulip bulbs is to plant them um, at least three times their depth so I, you know, if you're not sure, you can just kind of stack one and then stack another and then stack another and that's about three times the depth. I'm going to put a tiny bit more compost in because the soil will settle as I water it. And then what I do is I sprinkle some bulb starter and as I said, you can use any bulb starter you like and I just like to sprinkle some like that. And then I place my bulbs into this compost and you can plant them really quite densely and that's just going to create a wonderful display. So not quite touching but almost. So I'm kind of squishing them in. And that's how closely I would plant these. And then I'm just going to top up with compost. So what I'm going to do is decorate the top with some moss. Um, I could also sprinkle some grit on the top to just make it look uh, slightly prettier. And there's nothing wrong with compost but I prefer to put something on top. So what I use is um, dried sphagnum moss which I rehydrate and then scatter over the top like this. In the past I have used sheet moss but that was a mistake because with the sphagnum moss it's all very separated like this but with the sheet moss it comes in big sheets and um, the tulips had trouble, um, well they didn't have trouble making it through but what happened was they sort of, as they grew, they lifted the sheet moss right up and there was this sort of spaceship effect going on um, which I didn't like at all. It was fun but um, not fantastic looks wise. So that's all I do with that and then um, because we have problems in our garden with squirrels and badgers and all sorts of things, um, digging up my tulips, they seem less interested in the daffodils, but I will protect those too. But because um, 
the only way I found to really protect them is to put chicken wire on top. So I just reuse the same piece pieces of chicken wire every year and and literally just bend it around the pot. And I find that that acts as a deterrent for the larger bulbs. Um, they just ignore them. I mean, if they're really determined, they're going to try and lift it off. And of course, if you don't have problems with critters trying to eat your bulbs, then you're very lucky and you don't have to use the wire at all. And if you don't have any moss or you're happy not to worry about how the surface looks, because once the bulbs come through, they look fantastic. But if you're not concerned about how that looks, um, you can just leave your compost bare. You absolutely don't have to use moss. This is just how I like to do it. And then what I'm going to do now is water it in, water my bulbs in, and then I'm going to set them aside on a pallet to do their thing. So with narcissus or daffodils, uh, you'll find sometimes they come with little babies attached, don't worry about that, but that's the root, and then pointy side upwards. And again, I'm going to plant these really closely If you are planting them in a bed, you would want to plant them much further apart because Narcissa are really good at naturalising, which basically means that they'll just um, propagate, so they'll, they'll make more of them every year. So if you plant them too closely together, they won't have a chance to just create more bulbs. Um, so you want to plant them further apart if you're putting them in your beds, but in a pot where I know I'm going to take them out and then plant them in the garden next year, I can plant them really closely and then I get a fantastic display. And again, again I'm going to cover them in compost. And then a bit of sphagnum moss. And my label. And then some more wire. So these are crocus and I thought they'd look really pretty in this blue bowl. And again with crocus, it's pointy side up. I mean you can see there's another shoot coming out there and that's the root at the bottom. And I'm planting these again really closely together, not touching, but I've just kind of tipped the whole bag in and then I'm just putting them the right way up. And I am squeezing them in for a really good display. Again with the crocus I plant them um, you know three times their depth and then I don't worry so much about protecting these from critters because they don't seem that interested in crocus but I will decorate the top of my pot with some moss. I mean if you had loads of fir cones um, that's something else that's really nice to put on top of pots is just some fir cones and then don't forget to label them which I've just forgotten to do <laughs> the reason that I like to label my pots is because I will plant these out again into the garden next year um, I won't leave any of them in the pots because I reuse the pots come the summer but um, these will all go into my garden beds and if I haven't labelled them then once they've died down and the bulbs have absorbed all the nutrients from the leaves I'll have absolutely no idea what they are and I won't know where to put them or what colour they were. So that's why I label my pots and it's also the other reason why I don't do bulb lasagnas and I don't mix them. Um, it's also in the really shallow pots quite hard to do a bulb lasagna anyway and I think that these little dwarf bulbs look really cute just on their own making a statement in individual pots so this is iris harmony 
So these are Scylla or Scylla and they're bigger bulbs so I'm going to push them down. I think it's a big mistake not to plant them deep enough so even though they're in um, shallow pots try to make sure that you get them deep enough. So with this pot because it's smaller I'm not going to put a crock in the bottom because I've got no way of preventing it from blocking the bottom there and obviously the narrower the pot the less bulbs you're going to be able to get in. So these are lovely white crocus called Joan of Arc or Jean d'Arc. I'm still going to try and squeeze them in pointy side up and I actually think these make wonderful gifts. You can imagine with a lovely ribbon around it you could give that you know to a friend or loved one and then they'd have something to look forward to come the spring. So this is a pot that didn't have any holes in it and you can see that we've drilled holes into it and um, I like to use it because I kind of think it looks really cute and into this pot I'm going to be planting the Iphion. I don't know how you pronounce that but it, they're kind of beautiful multicolored um, little star shaped flowers if my memory serves me right. And these are tiny little bulbs and I can definitely get all of them in here just trying to make sure they're all pointing the right way up. So I'm just going to plant up the rest of my bulbs in exactly the same way. I'm making sure that all of them have good drainage. I'm making sure I put a bit of bulb starter in them but you don't have to. You know the bulbs have got all the food they need in the bulb themselves but that's just what I like to do and I'm covering all of them with moss because I like to make them look pretty. Anyway I'm going to show you where I'm going to store them and I'm just going to water them in and then leave them there to do their thing throughout the winter and then come spring we'll start to see little shoots popping up. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see what my tablescape looks like come the spring then do subscribe to my channel, hit the button below and follow along. Anyway thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you all next time. But because they grow um, so short, um, they look really cute in bulb pots. Bulb pots. Deeply down. Deep down. <laughs> uh, does that make any sense? I don't know.